traditional tales can be a really rich source of inspiration for a children's picture book. I think the thing about traditional tales which is so appealing is that they are universal and they often embody some kind of universal truth. They've been passed from generation to generation. They've been passed from country to country. Well, the Gruffalo is also more loosely based on a traditional tale. I'd actually come across this story in various forms. I'd read a story about a little girl who went into a forest and met a tiger, and she was terrified, but she managed to trick the tiger. Well, when I came to try and rewrite that story as a picture book, I just couldn't get anything to rhyme with tiger. I thought of various lines like, he ought to know, he really should, there aren't any tigers in this wood. I just wasn't happy with that. And then I thought, if I created an imaginary character, he could rhyme with whatever I wanted him to. And then I had to think what he would be called, and I thought it could rhyme with, silly old fox, doesn't he know? There's no such thing as a mm -mm o. So it had to end in o, and then I thought it'd be quite good if he began grrr, because that sounded fierce, and some other word, gruffalo came into my head. So um, there you are, the Gruffalo is based on a traditional tale. So what I'm saying is, it's not really enough just to retell a traditional tale. If you're writing a picture book story based on a traditional tale, you do have to add something. So if you're using a traditional tale, you can think about telling it in patterned language. You could think about changing the characters and the setting of that story, just like I changed a tiger into a gruffalo.